Brian, I have followed the uh, disputations of the multiverse, as you like to say, the multiverse and its discontents uh, in terms of uh, is it a science and can we know anything about it? And if it's not a science, uh, should we even be discussing it? And the, the uh, significance of that question is, 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 a, is a very significant one. It has impact really across, uh, across all science in terms of what can you really know? Can you really know something that is the product of theory even if you cannot detect it? Even if you can't detect it, maybe even in principle. Right. This is a fundamental question. You're an experimentalist. You're deeply involved in questions with the multiverse. Give me a sense of where we are today, where we go from here, uh, and uh, as, a, as an experimentalist, what can you contribute? Yeah, so I've asked these questions of none other than uh, renowned cosmologist Jim Peebles, who won the Nobel Prize in uh, about 2019, I believe it was. And his response in a very el eloquent way said, shut up and measure, <laughs> <laughs> implying, which I agree with actually, that our job is not to kind of ad be advocative, of one of these alternatives or one of these paradigms, but it's to teach the controversy, so to speak. And I think it's, it's, it's quite fascinating because we could be in a highly ambiguous state, right? We could come to a point where our brilliant colleagues on the Simons Observatory and the BICEP team is continuing as well. And that's healthy too, to have competitors in the marketplace of experiments. Yeah. Uh, so let a couple of flowers bloom yeah. at least. But we could come to a point when these brilliant experimentalists that I get to work with, we reach a saturation point. We can't improve our technology anymore. They're already building detectors that can't be improved upon mm -hmm. if they're operating on Earth. And the only way to get them any better is to take them to space. And even that doesn't do that much good. What if we get to this point? where we've winnowed down the zoo of inflationary models and we've done tremendous, we've killed off billions and billions of, mm -hmm. of creatures, of distortions, mm -hmm. of, of theorist nightmares. And, but there's still an infinite number of real numbers that aren't excluded. How will science handle it when we're in this ambiguous state? Humans hate ambiguity. They hate this notion of when does life begin? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they hate the notion of you know with gun control. Should you have an infinite number of guns? Should you have no guns? Um, we like black and white. What if there is no black and white resolution? What if we can't say that inflation took place or inflation didn't take place? What if we can't say these alternative number one didn't take place or did take? If we're in that state, I don't know what will happen in the philosophy of cosmology. I think you know on a practical level, I'll still keep teaching. You know. Mm. Everything, by the way, is hinging upon a moment in time that's so incomprehensibly small. It's va vastly, slightly more than what's called the Planck time, which mm. is perhaps the smallest interval of time that's even conceivable to discuss. So we're talking about a few hundred Planck times. <laughs> At that level of understanding lies all of our ignorance. And it may be akin to, well, how will, how will you know, scientists react to the fact, as they do now, that we mm -hmm. can't really know what happens inside of our event horizon. We can have theories, but do we understand the implications outside of it? Does that do things to us in terms of our knowledge or our philosophical dispositions? I don't know. Well, well here, here's the question that um, it seems uh, uh, in, uh, uncontroversial that uh, that a multiverse is the product of our, our best theories today, which are the inflation theories. That seems to be a natural consequence of it. Maybe not 100% sure, some, but some disagree. Most yeah. people, I would mm -hmm. think, would say that. Uh, other people would say that may or may not be true, but it doesn't matter because we can't measure a multiverse in principle. Now, uh, I'm giving you that as a supposition. Suppose it is the case that we cannot measure a multiverse in principle, or as you say, we know how to measure it, but we've gotten down to the, the absolute level of where we can measure and, and we don't get a result, yeah. which is kind of the same coming out of from different ways, getting right, the same, fact, same, right. same yeah. fact. So some would say, therefore, we should discard the multiverse because we cannot in now in principle ever know whether it exists. So discard it. Whereas the theorists would say, no, that's a mistake. That's a mistake. Just because we, we're not able to observe it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Maybe it's beyond our level of comprehension or the capacity of our instruments, but we can't observe it because it is the product of what we're saying. Mm. So that's the tension. It's, a, it's philosophical, but it, it becomes very significant. Mm -hmm. where, where are you on that? If you, the, the hypothetical case, you've come to the end of the line. You cannot know whether, or, or you're sure that you cannot measure uh, uh, output from the multiverse. 
is it, is it still allowed to be a, a, a legitimate discussion in science if it's, if it's determined by, uh, by theoretical results, but it cannot in principle be accessed? Right. So there's a couple of questions there. I think one, one thing to note is, uh, is that I don't necessarily know that it is in the purview of cosmologists to account for the origin event of the universe and, and its place within the multiverse any more than a biologist has to understand and explain the origin of life. I, I don't think it, it would be great. I personally would like to understand it, and even if I was a biologist and I'm not a biologist and I still wanna understand the origin of life. So all the more so, I would like to understand the origin of the universe. However, on a practicing you know, kind of standpoint, the, 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 the attribution that there is no way to test the multiverse, I think that's disputed. People do claim that not only is it possible by a preponderance, if you like, of circumstantial evidence, right. okay. okay? So, but there are actually claims that we, there are observable signals in the cosmic microwave background, distinct from the BMOs, nothing to do with the BMO polarization that I study with the Simons oh. Observatory, that you would see a certain type of pattern in the microwave sky that would be indicative and only indicative of a multiverse so-called bubble collision, a collision mm -hmm. with another universe. Mm -hmm. the problem is, and these are eminent cosmologists that predict this or make models of this. The problem is we don't know when that would happen. That could be the next universe over as, you know, Philip K. Dick would say, you know, mm -hmm. it's a great universe. Mm -hmm. It's just one light year over. Okay. So we have to wait one year. What if it's a billion years? What if it's a billion light years away? What if it's a trillion light? We have no knowledge of its existence. We have a, no knowledge of its, of its uh, pr you know, position within the multiverse, this other universe. Um, so that, but it, but it, strictly speaking, there are, attempts to explain observationally or to detect the multiverse. Leaving those aside, what if we don't? Right, Okay. that's where I get to. Right, so um, I think, again, I am sometimes dismayed by the, by the kind of ambivalence of my students to these questions, <laughs> that it doesn't trouble them. And I think maybe they get that from me and maybe I'm just not that good a teacher or, <laughs> or maybe that's just their disposition. I am fascinated by, by these ultimate issue type questions of existence, of, of, of purpose, of meaning. Is it ultimately meaningless? As Steven Weinberg says, the more it's comprehensible, the more it seems pointless. Um, and, and, you know, he more than some other people was responsible for predictions of things like dark energy, mm -hmm. which have consequences uh, pertinent to the multiverse. So, um, I think the trouble comes in when we start looking for a teleos, you know, we start thinking, is there a purpose to the multiverse? Um, rather than saying it's unobservable, just as the event horizons interior is unobservable or quarks. Have you ever seen a quark? Mm -hmm. Um, I even take it further. Have you ever seen a triangle? <laughs> no, nope, you've never <laughs> seen a triangle. <laughs> you've seen things in a triangular arrangement. <laughs> uh, but furthermore, the problem that I have, and I don't think that multiverse proponents have been as forthright as their antagonist is in the concept of what, why is it that the laws of physics, um, but perhaps not the laws of logic or the laws of philosophy. Why should those not vary from multi, you know, with universe to universe within the multiverse? In other words, we hear often that the, that the constants of nature will vary. Mm -hmm. Why not modus tollens? <laughs> Why not modus ponens? <laughs> Why not the laws that of algebra? That deals with abstract objects right. and what the existence. So then I think all hope is lost. If you <laughs> couldn't say that mathematics and logic holds, then I think we'd be in philosophical deep water yeah. if, if we knew for sure the multiverse. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a, um, a kind of m mixing ways of thinking that just because you have different laws of physics in a multiverse, which is certainly possible, um, I don't think that leads to the conclusion of different laws of logic. Right. Um, it may not. I mean, the vacuum state of in the string landscape interpretation of the multiverse, you know, remember there are multiple multiverses, yeah, right? Yeah, there's already in quantum right, mechanical right, multiverses. There's, right, there. there's they, and string theory. You can theory nest them. <laughs> <laughs> get up multiverses of multiverses. Yeah. Um, right, so it's hard to pin that down. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a fascinating question. It doesn't fill me with dread. It fills me with excitement. And maybe that's because I'm an experimentalist. Mm. And I do sometimes take solace in the fact that I can shut up and build stuff mm. in my lab. 